How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? I love the young people. In this video, we're going to look at Fallen Empires in Stellaris, the ships they bring to the theater of war, and how we can defeat them in detail. I'll be presenting a number of ship designs that are very effective at taking out Fallen Empire ships, and of course, everything will be placed in some nice chapters. So without any further ado, let's dive in. Let's start off by looking at the weapons and defenses of each of the Fallen Empires. The Xenophobic Fallen Empire are quite aggressive. If you settle any worlds adjacent to their space, they will attack you very, very quickly. All Fallen Empire fleets are comprised of two classes of ship. The first is a battleship style ship, the Battle Cruiser, and the second is a destroyer style ship, the Escort. The Xenophobic Fallen Empire focuses primarily on kinetic type weaponry. So if you're going to build defenses, armor is preferred here. Their escort point defenses feature mainly flat cannons, so they have basically no defense against missiles. Except, of course, for their ludicrously high armor, and that's common across all Fallen Empire ships. The Spiritualist Fallen Empire can also be very, very aggressive. There are a number of holy worlds out there in the galaxy with specific names. If you attempt to colonize any of them, the Spiritualist Fallen Empire will attack you. Their battle cruisers feature focused arc emitters. That means they actually have bypass weaponry. Alongside that, they have torpedoes and strike craft, which are shield bypassing weaponry, and then neutron launchers and plasma, which are going to be very weak against shields and very strong against armor. Overall, a balanced defensive approach is going to be useful against the Spiritualist Fallen Empire, though armor or shield hardening is very, very critical if you want to keep your ships alive. Their escort class ships have lots of torpedoes and point defense, so missiles will be negated somewhat, and your large ships will be suffering to these explosive weapons. The Xenophilic Fallen Empire generally doesn't try and attack you, unless, of course, they have awakened. Their ships feature a general balance of weaponry, some kinetic and some laser-based. Their excellent weapons are mega cannons, meaning armor will be useful to defend against them. And of course, as ever, they have lots and lots of strike craft. Their escorts come equipped with point defense and kinetic artillery. Overall, armor is going to be your best defense against xenophilic fallen empires. The Materialist Fallen Empire are the only Fallen Empire to have their own Acumenopolis world, making them a very, very juicy target. The Materialist Fallen Empire has a lot of phase disruptors, so you'll want to bring some form of hardening to counter this. Otherwise, they generally run laser or plasma type weaponry with point defense on their escorts, so your missiles will be shot down. Last, but by no means least, we have the robotic Fallen Empire that come with their very own ring world and a couple of awesome ruined ring worlds you can repair as well. Their main battle cruisers are very similar to the materialist battle cruiser, but with lasers instead of plasma. However, when it comes to the escort class, you are rather lucky in that they have mostly plasma and absolutely no disruptors here. You'll also notice that all ships across all Fallen Empire fleets have dark matter reactors, dark matter thrusters, dark matter deflectors, and jump drives. So if you want to get your hands on this dark matter technology, researching the debris left by these ships is a fantastic way to get there. If you also don't have jump drive, if you come in very early against the Fallen Empire, which is something I'd probably recommend doing for a mid-game power spike, then you might also want to pick up this component too. If you're enjoying this video, please contend with that like button. Let's look now at how we can actually defeat a Fallen Empire by looking at our ship designs. I'm going to present three different ship designs to you that are all effective in different ways. First up, we have the A design here, a cruiser. If you remember back to a few moments ago when we looked at each of the Fallen Empire ships, they had very high armor and shield hit points, but very, very low hull hit points relative to those other segments. And critically, absolutely no armor or shield hardening. This means that disruptors are 100% the way to go. If you can't get your hands on disruptors, if you've researched cloud lightning, that is also useful, 
though disruptors will end up having a higher DPS, so if you have the choice, I'd recommend tier 3 disruptors. When it comes to your defensive loadout, you should probably design your ships based on whichever Fallen Empire type you are coming up against. Adding in something like Afterburners can get you in the fight just a little bit quicker, reducing the amount of damage your ships will take before they evaporate the Fallen Empire fleets. And depending on the enemy fleets, if they have Fallen Archimitters or the Bypass Weaponry, you'll want to throw in some Reactive Armor or a Shield Hardener or two just to boost your hardening and prevent their Bypass weapons crippling your fleets. You actually don't need many of these cruisers in order to take down a Fallen Empire. About 300 to 350 naval capacity worth of these ships will do the job of taking out the Fallen Empire fleets. That's going to cost you somewhere in the region of 60 to 70,000 alloys. As you can see, these ships do a reasonably good job at defeating the Fallen Empire fleets. However, you're going to suffer high losses because you're having to go so close to the enemy fleet. And these disruptors will cause a lot of disengagement for the enemy fleets. So it will take quite a few battles before you can eliminate all of those Fallen Empire ships. Luckily for you though, every Fallen Empire ship you defeat cannot be replaced because Fallen Empires, unlike Awakened or Regular Empires, cannot build any new ships. Next up is a battleship class that looks pretty silly. But don't worry, it might be a bit of a meme, but this is effective. We have just a focused Arc Emitter equipped on our X slot, and then I've also grabbed three Afterburners for more sublight speed. We're trying to boost this because we need these ships to be quick and an artillery combat computer for increased ship's weapons range. One of these battleships, however, is exactly the same price as the previous cruisers that we just looked at. They do take double the naval capacity, so you'll need extra naval capacity in order to run these ships, but they are very, very cheap relative to normal battleships. Whilst your fleet power may look very low, here we have 60k in fleet power, these battleships are going to cause the enemy fleet to evaporate because of their focused arc emitters striking straight at the heart of the enemy ships. The main issue you'll notice with this design class is that they are unable to fire if they are turned in the wrong direction. This definitely limits their effectiveness. You also must achieve a critical mass of battleships in order to defeat the Fallen Empire fleets you'll probably need somewhere in the region of 1200 naval capacity worth of these ships to knock out all of the Fallen Empire fleets in one go. Looking at the combat results here, you'll notice they are slightly more effective at actually destroying the Fallen Empire ships than our basic disruptors were, but they do still suffer from high disengagement, meaning you'll have to have repeated engagements to destroy fully the Fallen Empire fleets. The last and arguably best design to use is a carrier battleship. Now, again, we're running a focused arc emitter here, and this arc emitter is the only thing that will deal damage to the Fallen Empire ships. Everything else on this battleship is simply there to soak up the enemy weaponry or attention. The advanced strike craft will engage the enemy strike craft and shoot at them. The point defense will shoot down enemy torpedoes coming in, and the missiles will use up their precious point defense weapons, but that does mean that point defense is not going to be firing at you. Running defensive modules is probably recommended. This is going to increase the health and lifespan of these ships and keep them in the fight for longer. Of course, depending on what the ethics of the other Fallen Empire are, that of course determines their loadout, you'll probably want to change these defenses in line with the comments I made earlier in this video. You'll want between 40 and 50 of these battleships minimum to deal with all of the Fallen Empire forces. Though of course, the more battleships you bring to bear, the faster you will take down the enemy fleet and the fewer casualties you will suffer. These battleships are particularly effective at actually knocking out and destroying the Fallen Empire ships rather than simply forcing them to retreat. They also have a very high survivability thanks to all of that shield and armor. 
Looking through the damage output screen here, we can see that the enemy point defense was busy shooting at our strike craft and our missiles. Our point defense was busy shooting at their strike craft. And because of this, only their disruptors, plasma, and tachyon weaponry actually dealt damage to our hull. Their fighters were completely neutralized. On our end, we did deal a tiny amount of damage with our whirlwind missiles, strike craft, and marauder missiles, but that basically represents the HP of one of their escort class ships in terms of the hull. So as I did say before, the focused Archimitters are carrying the damage output of this fleet. Bypass is the way to destroy Fallen Empire fleets. In order to fight the Fallen Empire slightly sooner, you could take the Galactic Contender Ascension perk. This grants you 33% additional damage to Fallen Empires. On top of that, it is definitely worthwhile to complete the Oppose the Fallen agenda, which is unlocked in the Statecraft tradition, as that will grant you a further 25% additional damage to Fallen Empire fleets. With all of those additional bonuses, the total number of these battleships that you'll need reduces by around 10 to 20%, reducing your overall alloy expenditure to about 50,000 alloys. Though you must always have your bypass weaponry if you want to take on the Fallen Empire. That is the cornerstone of fighting Fallen Empires effectively. If you're enjoying this video on how to defeat the Fallen Empire, but you'd like to know more about defeating the Crisis and which ships you have to build to be most effective at doing that, then click the video on screen now.